One of the great miseries during the war for civilians was food rationing. Believe it or not, you couldn't just eat what you wanted, you could only eat what the government allowed. German submarines were attacking the ships that brought food to Britain, so compulsory food rationing was introduced. At first, the Isle of Man resisted the idea, and members of the Manx government were sure we could get by without it, even though it had come into force elsewhere in Britain. It was reported that every farmer's wife in the island made good bacon, and there was a surplus of rabbits. Indeed, if ever there was a place blessed with plenty in Europe today, it is the Isle of Man, said one of our MHKs. But eventually, this attitude was deemed to be unpatriotic, and gradually, and inevitably, through a series of notices over the first years of the war, rationing was introduced, and one of the first items to be hit was sugar. When rationing was at its worst, you were only permitted eight ounces of sugar. That looks like this. That's eight ounces per week, not per day. And to put it in some sort of perspective, that's the equivalent of just six cans of Coke for the entire week, and then your sugar ration was gone. To add to the misery, you are only permitted a paltry four ounces of butter, one ounce of cheese, just two ounces of tea, one egg, and just over a pound of meat for your entire weekly ration. But you were permitted eight ounces of sweets. Woohoo! However, if you ate more than you were permitted, it was a criminal offence and you could end up in court. No wonder people lost weight and were generally more healthy at the end of the war than they've ever been since. Lots of other items were rationed as well, such as petrol, cigarettes, soap, paper, and even items that weren't rationed were difficult to obtain, such as oranges and bananas. Bringing goods to Britain was costly and dangerous. So much so, by the end of the war, some children had never even seen a banana, and some refused to believe they even existed. Everyone was issued with a ration book, in which everything you bought was officially recorded. And of course, there were always busybodies looking to catch you out. Even the newspapers were on the alert. Here they are featuring a picture of all the cars in Victoria Street one Saturday. Owners using their cars for non-essential purposes. They're petrol wasters and can expect to be prosecuted, said the newspaper. This wouldn't be allowed in England, they claimed, because petrol is scarce and men are risking their lives to bring it across the seas. Clothing was also rationed. You had to have coupons in order to buy things such as coats and shirts. At its strictest, at the end of the war, you had 24 points a year. Now, bearing in mind that shoes were 9 points and a coat was 18, you couldn't buy much. However, second-hand clothes, if you could get them, weren't included. Bread and vegetables were not rationed and everyone was urged to dig for victory and to grow their own. Here are the pupils of Braddon School showing us how to do it. The public were also constantly being reminded to be thrifty. The squanderbug made lots of appearances in local newspapers, sometimes with the Nazi swastika on him, and everyone was urged not to spend more than they needed to. And of course, officials were on the lookout for breaches of the law. Now this cake is most definitely illegal, because it has chocolate on the top and cream in the middle. Now, you could have a cake with chocolate, or you could have a cake with cream, but not both. It seems that a certain Constable Cowan specialised in confiscating offending cakes from shops and taking the owners to court, producing the cakes as evidence. It's not recorded whether he was allowed to eat the cakes afterwards, but he certainly wasn't very popular. <laughs>